As the World Health Organization officially declares the outbreak a pandemic. Millions urged to work from home. Airlines now canceling flights. The virus now in every region of this country. Nobody wanted the pandemic. None of us, you know, we would have preferred to be able to open in 2020 on schedule like we had planned. So when the pandemic hit in March of 2020, we were, we were preparing to be open later that summer, early that fall of 2020. I do feel like, yes, we got, we got through that initial shock, maybe, of a pandemic. And so now, um, you know, a, as a community and, um, you know, even uh, companies and organizations and things like that, uh, they've learned to adjust. How are we going to keep everybody employed? And how are we going to keep things rolling so that the building you know, does what it's here for, you know, which is provide entertainment for the community? This last two years has really been a challenge for all of us here in Independence. At the center, it's really decreased attendance and people have been uh, leery of getting together in groups. The interesting thing as far as arts during the pandemic is it gave us an opportunity to really um, be creative and you see that in other aspects but how can we still sell art or um, reach the public with art and um, you know continue to uh, create and grow art during that period. We all would have preferred a world without the pandemic but given that the pandemic came I think that we've been very resilient. I think we've responded very well. The one advantage if you want to look for a silver lining in all of this was that we had additional time to work a lot of the bugs out. We've been uh, blessed to have individuals come forward uh, to volunteer resources, their time and their treasure to assist those who are really in need. As a whole, I think we just started uh, thinking outside of the box a little bit more. You know, it's such a, a, a neat community around here. So um, people reaching out to each other and artists reaching out to each other and saying, what can we do um, to help each other out? We're excited to say and we're looking forward to um, hopefully opening this uh, late spring. So with the first floor and the glass blowing studio and programs. I think as we come out of the pandemic, it provides us the leverage and opportunity to increase our meal capabilities so that we can provide meals more efficiently and effectively to both uh, kids and seniors. Uh, more senior programs in terms of exercise and health will be available once we're able to meet more uh, easily and people feel a little more comfortable with getting out and, and coming to the center. The, uh concert market has come back with a vengeance. What we've had, what we have on sale, and what we have booked and just haven't announced yet, we've got 18 concerts and comedy shows on tap. The most we've ever done in a year before has been 14. So it's truly an exciting time for the Truman Legacy, truly an exciting time for this institution, and by extension, I think a very exciting time for the City of Independence. Before I begin today, I wanted to introduce some very special guests who are with us today, and I am very grateful to all of you who came out this morning and joined us in light of the rescheduling that occurred, which seems to be a tradition of the state of the city. I think in the last five years, we've probably had to reschedule due to weather at least twice, maybe three times. Um, the friends around the region who I rely upon and um, work so closely with to do things for independence in eastern Jackson County and the greater Kansas City metropolitan area are very kind to be here today. Mayor Carson Ross from Blue Springs, Mayor Mike McDonough from Raytown, Mayor Mike Larson from Sugar Creek, Mayor David Slater, from Pleasant Valley and Mayor Dana Webb. Thank you all for being here. Uh, <laughs> also um, with us today is Teresa Galvin from Jackson County Legislature, so thank you for being with us. And my colleagues on the Independent City Council who are here, uh, Council Member DeLuce, Karen DeLucy, Councilman Bryce Stewart, and Councilman Dan Hobart, thank you all for joining and uh, being here today with us as well. Welcome to the 2021 State of the City Address. I'm pleased to carry on this annual tradition 
to reflect on some of the accomplishments of the past year and share our goals and our expectations for the future. While I'm the one who gets to deliver the state of the city, my remarks are intended to represent the entire Independent City Council, our professional city staff, the dedicated citizens who serve on our boards and commissions, and hundreds of volunteers who lend their time and talent to our city. Before proceeding with my prepared remarks, I am going to address the credible allegation of police overtime misuse that was brought to the attention of the City Council and the public yesterday morning. An external independent investigation will be conducted as soon as possible to determine any wrongdoing. This allegation is serious, and if proven to be true, there will be serious consequences for anyone who had direct or indirect knowledge of any violation of city policy or law, regardless of his or her position or title within the city of independence or within the community. I'm also saddened to share today that former chief of police, Fred Mills, passed away yesterday following a brief illness. Please continue to show your support for the family of Chief Mills during this very difficult time. The theme, appropriately, I guess, for today's address is resiliency. I've read a lot about this topic and I've had very many conversations to find out what resiliency means to our community and how we can continue to build a city that possesses the qualities of resiliency. I sought to answer a question. Are we a resilient city, and why does it matter? The concept of resiliency began to gain international attention following the events of 9-11 20 years ago. Individuals, but particularly businesses, started to think about how they would respond to the 9-11 terrorist attack and what they needed to do to prepare for future calamities. Uh-oh, my pages got out of order. That's not good. The, the idea of organizational resiliency expanded in the wake of the global financial crisis, a time when businesses needed to respond swiftly to rapid and potentially devastating changes. The toughest and most important challenge arrived in 2020 with the worldwide pandemic, marking the third large-scale crisis of this century. Those who had built a culture of resiliency over time fared far better economically, operationally, and emotionally with each new challenge. It is said that Adversity is a great teacher, and we've had little choice but to be great students as our city has adapted to ever-changing conditions. Leaders can't be certain of their resiliency until they are tested by adversity. And over the course of the year, our community experienced more than our fair share of challenges. Economic uncertainties strain our city resources. Businesses struggle with hiring employees, getting products and materials, and renewing customer confidence. COVID-19 continues to disrupt work, school, and community life. Independents experienced unprecedented weather events. And most tragically, we suffered the loss of police officer Blaze Madrid Evans and firefighter EMT Chad Savinfield. People and organizations who thrive in the face of change and come out stronger on the other side of crisis possess a range of characteristics that add up to resiliency. Preparation, collaboration, clarity, authenticity, and optimism are the prevailing traits we lean on to guide us through the darkest days and, and that independence has valued and built throughout our history. These characteristics of resiliency don't stand alone, they're intertwined. When we are vulnerable in one area, we can depend on our strength in another to see us through. 
Being prepared for an emergency meant that when the unexpected happened, independence was ready. In every stage of the global pandemic, your city has been prepared to move into action. Reliance on careful planning and training allowed us to identify emerging threats and mitigate potential impact. Plans were developed and implemented quickly, ensuring essential public services were delivered without interruption. We took measures to protect our employees' financial security, health, and wellness by following the sound financial policies that are in place to direct the use of one-time funds. The needs of the community for food, supplies, business loans, utility assistance, temporary shelter, and transportation were better met because we were ready to access grants and funding and volunteers when the opportunity came. The Independence Health Department was reestablished last January as a local public health authority so that Independence could determine the best policies and programs for our residents and businesses. In March, the Health Department began distributing COVID-19 vaccines and, is, and administered more than 24,000 doses in the final nine months of 2021. Our police and fire departments knew what to do in the hours and days following the tragic deaths of Blaze Madrid Evans and Chad Sappenfield. The procedures and resources that are called for in the event of a line of duty death were ready, allowing us to support the families and colleagues of our young heroes. The community outpouring sustained our officers and firefighters through these tragedies, as well as the other losses of colleagues that occurred in the past year. Our employees' emotional health in the wake of multiple traumatic events was of urgent concern, and we were prepared with on-site counseling for all city personnel. Resilient people don't go it alone. They rely on close friends, colleagues, and family. They ask for and accept help when it's needed, talk out problems, and help others when they are in need. In these stressful situations, Knowing there is support inside and outside our organization helped all of us to cope and to begin to recover. Collaboration, based on strong and supportive relationships with key stakeholders, is an essential component of a resilient organization. Our collaborative efforts made 2021 a year of impressive economic growth in the most unlikely conditions. Independence welcomed 1,241 new businesses, a 20% increase over the prior year, and we renewed more than 3,500 business licenses. The Independence Economic Development Council managed 94 attraction projects last year, the highest volume of the past 15 years. More than 600 new jobs were created in 2021, and 630 existing jobs were retained. Private capital investment topped $127 million, the highest number since 2016. Creating a business-friendly environment where employers want to locate and grow is a collaborative effort. Resilient communities use their strengths. While the changes in economic conditions and business operations have forced employers and entrepreneurs to think differently, independence tapped into its strengths, the things that come naturally. Working in cooperation with the Chamber of Commerce and EDC are many business associations that support the Independence Square, Englewood Arts District, Nolan Road, Fairmount, the 39th Street Corridor, has always paid dividends for our city. Neighbor helping neighbor, celebrating others' success is what independence does best. Just last week, ground was broken on Cargo Largo to relocate all operations to Nolan Road, which will bring 500 new jobs to our community and has been more than a decade in the making. 
Centerpoint Medical Center, Ronson Manufacturing, and Olin Winchester made significant investments in their facilities and workforce, keeping our local economy strong and growing. New programs are in development to attract and retain talented employees to work in our local businesses. The Independence Police Department is collaborating with Metropolitan Community College and local high schools to recruit and train new police officers. The Truman Heartland Community Foundation launched Job Skills for New Careers in 2020, a collaborative initiative focused on helping adults gain skills for higher paying jobs. In its first year, the program graduated 53 individuals in the areas of certified nursing assistant and welding. Last year, the program added three new courses, medical coding and billing, phlebotomy, and constructions materials handling, and nearly tripled the number of graduates. Community organizations like the Northwest CDC Fairmount Community Center strengthened partnerships to serve older adults and families impacted by the turbulence of 2021. The organization experienced an increased demand for clothing, nutrition services, home repair, and financial assistance, and worked with private donors, PPP lenders, and organizations like the United Way to meet the growing needs. The Innovation Center, our business incubator, graduated six new businesses last year, including Franny Frank's Coffee Cakes that opened in the Englewoods Arts District. By the end of 2021, there were 82 small businesses working out of the Innovation Center, which means nearly 200 individual jobs in independence. Overall, the Innovation Center has had an impact of $9.32 million to our local economy. It is exciting to see the continued growth of these innovators and the next new idea to grow right here in Independence. Clear objectives ensure the City of Independence is built for long-term success and stays focused in times of trouble. Our Independence for All goals are designed by the community, adopted by the City Council, and supported by the City staff. Sticking to a set of goals and working as a unified team is essential particularly in times of chaos and uncertainty. The community's very first five-year strategic plan, Independence for All, reached its conclusion in 2021, completing or implementing 97% of its 74 specific goals since 2017. The beginning of 2022 launched the next five years of Independence for All, approved unanimously by the City Council on September 7th, 2021. Clear strategic goals show us where independence is heading and how it plans to get there. When the City Council needs to make difficult decisions, the goals set forth by the community in Independence for All can be relied upon for guidance. By adopting the strategic plan, your city council has committed to focusing thought, energy, and financial resources in four overarching objectives. Grow the economy, reduce blight, reduce crime and disorder, improve perception. The city council members represent a broad range of talents, experiences, and expertise to achieve the community vision. Collectively, the council brings professional knowledge in the areas of business, law, utilities, public safety, information technology, communications, ministry, and retail, as well as extensive volunteer and community experience. Our plan is well-defined, and we possess a diverse skill set to reach our goals. Voters made themselves clear in November approving by historic margins the fire protection sales tax and amendment to Prop P, the local use tax. The overwhelming endorsement of public safety provides us with additional financial resources to retain and recruit high quality police officers and firefighters while upgrading facilities and equipment. These new revenues will add to the money already committed to police and fire to make independence safer and more prosperous. 
I appointed a special task force in 2021 to develop goals for the Independence Health Department. Earning the local public health authority designation requires us to provide certain services, but our vision is much greater. Mental health services, including addiction and substance abuse, are a key focus for our city and for our community. We are encouraging our community to speak openly and honestly about mental health without fear to understand the complex factors of mental wellness, address community needs, and connect people with support and services. Our health department, alongside partners like Comprehensive Mental Health, has hosted town hall meetings on mental health to encourage open dialogue and has recently formed the Independence Suicide and Mental Health Task Force. Mental health is a recurring concern in our community and we are offering our staff training and support. City employees are becoming certified in mental health first aid to recognize different warning signs of mental health challenges, how to respond and assist those in crisis and how to create personal mental health plans to ensure that they are taking care of themselves. This is a valuable training, and we look forward to continuing to expand it with more staff being certified in 2022. Clear goals and tactics must be accompanied by flexible thinking and the ability to course correct when things don't go as planned. Resiliency doesn't prevent discouragement, disappointment, or negative thoughts but resilient people and organizations take notice when thoughts and actions are counterproductive. If something isn't working, resiliency allows us to make adjustments and find ways to keep moving ahead. Independence is viewed as a city that is authentic in terms of both identity and accountability. Through our branding and marketing research, our image is continually reinforced with words like historic, hardworking, friendly, and community. But independence is also described as unsafe, run down, trashy, and poor. Independence is not afraid to have difficult conversations about our weaknesses and lead the region in addressing the conditions that threaten our safety and prosperity. Authentic leadership in an uncertain environment depends on how well we navigate these challenges. Organizations and communities that thrive in the midst of changing conditions focus on the big picture, embrace new approaches, and persevere. Improving communications and transparency with the community and leading with empathy drives us towards success. In 2021, the Brand Independence Committee created nearly 30 social media campaigns, events, images, and videos celebrating heritage, history, cultural, culture, and individuals. Through these various medium, our citizens were encouraged to experience our cultural richness through community conversations, gatherings, books, food, and art. In July, a historic marker along the Truman Walking Trail was dedicated to share the history of The Neck, a vibrant interracial neighborhood that thrived from the mid-19th century until the creation of McCoy Park and Best Truman Parkway in the 1960s. Many Neck residents were forced from their homes and unable to purchase homes in racially segregated independence. This is our authentic story and one that we can learn and grow from. The city received a score of 25 in the 2021 Municipal Equity Index. The MEI is sponsored by the Human Rights Campaign to examine how inclusive municipal laws, policies, and services are of LGBTQ plus people who live and work in the city. Cities receive a rating based on non-discrimination laws, the, munici the, muni mis excuse me, the municipality as an employer, municipal services, law enforcement, and leadership on LGBTQ plus equality. Prior to 2021, 
Independents received a score of zero. 25 out of 100 is significant progress in LGBTQ plus inclusivity, but there is a lot of room for improvement. Sharing past history, present experiences, and future aspirations of our diverse community gives all of us a better understanding of the authentic independence. Deliberately engaging people from a wide range of backgrounds led to frank and meaningful conversations this year on how to solve problems and build a better, more inclusive community. Authenticity also means accepting responsibility for imperfection, acknowledging when plans failed to meet expectations. Progress in many critical areas is occurring at a pace that is far too slow. Residents and businesses are rightfully frustrated by things like the negative impact of increased homelessness in and around independence. We have struggled to find adequate solutions for the complex problems of homelessness that create trash and litter in our neighborhoods, unsafe conditions in our public streets, bridges, and parks, and illegal activity. Our police force is depleted. And despite providing the financial resources, we have had too little success in putting more officers on our streets. The Independence Fire Department is straining under the increased calls for service with fewer personnel. Burnout is occurring. These are real problems that matter most to our citizens and our visitors, and our results have simply not been good enough. We must do better without haste to reach our goals of reducing blight, reducing crime and disorder, improving perception, and growing the economy. Hope for the future gives us the determination to rebound from setbacks. Optimism, it isn't just about positive thinking, but building resilience by, seeking, by seeing risks and taking precautions to avoid problems. A great risk to our community over the past two years has been the loss of cherished traditions and connections. 2021 saw revival of many important and meaningful community events and some new arrivals. We overcorrected from a year void of many celebrations and came back bigger and better than ever with holiday events, including living windows, the independent square lighting, Englewood Arts District holiday lighting, Cable Dahmer Arena, tree lighting and open skate, and holiday market, just to name a few. We resumed the mayor's prayer breakfast and Truman Award as in-person events. Santa Caligon once again returned for Labor Day weekend. Wine Fest came back with a roar. We celebrated the state of Missouri bicentennial with numerous programs and family-friendly gatherings. The newly renovated Truman Library reopened after a lengthy closure, and we finally got to see what a $40 million renovation looks like. Our local museums and historic homes once again welcomed visitors and volunteers. The pent-up demand for close-to-home, family-friendly activities was evident as we saw our hotel occupancy rebound. Independence played host to the American Solar Car, Car Challenge, and we unveiled new murals and statues as part of our growing public art program. Using these five attributes as a judge, preparation, collaboration, clarity, authenticity, and optimism, the city of Independence is resilient without a doubt. Over the last year, we have faced economic uncertainty and found success. We have grown our public health infrastructure and made a tremendous impact on the future of our community. We have mourned the loss of brave young men and longtime colleagues. Our community rallied with love and compassion to support our first responders and all those struggling. We have found hope and optimism as a community, celebrating traditions and leaving a lasting impact with public art for generations to come. Resiliency does not happen by accident. 
to cultivate and maintain our ability to predict problems, adapt to change, and recover from setbacks requires desire, effort, investment, and action. By deliberately building these traits into our mindset and culture, we will be better equipped to create the community we all desire and deserve in 2022 and well beyond. Thank you for being here today.